Ever wondered how those giant metal cylinders in welding shops actually work? What's in them? How do they get filled? And how do we make sure they don't blow up while just sitting there? Welding might be all sparks and metal, but the unsung heroes of the process are the gas bottles standing quietly in the background, tall, pressurized, and full of science. In today's episode, we're pulling back the curtain on welding gas bottles, how they're filled, how they're stored, and why they're built to be tough as nails. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. Before we dive into the bottling process, let's talk briefly about why we need gas for welding in the first place. Welding gases do a lot more than just puff out a bit of smoke. They serve as shielding agents to protect the weld from contaminants like oxygen and moisture in the air. Depending on the welding method, MIG, TIG, or oxyfuel, you'll be using different gases argon, carbon dioxide, oxygen, acetylene, or even helium. Each one has its own job, whether it's creating a stable arc, adding heat, or improving weld quality. But here's the thing. These gases can't be pumped out of thin air and used on demand. They need to be purified, compressed, stored, and transported in a very controlled way. Let's start at the source. Gases used for welding are either extracted from the atmosphere or produced through chemical processes. Take argon, for example. It's a noble gas that makes up less than 1% of Earth's atmosphere. It's harvested through a process called fractional distillation, where air is supercooled until it turns into a liquid. From there, different gases boil off at different temperatures. Argon has its own boiling point and once it's separated, it's collected and purified. Acetylene, on the other hand, doesn't come from air. It's created by reacting calcium carbide with water. This produces a flammable gas used for cutting and welding metals at high temperatures. Once these gases are generated and purified, they're ready for the next phase, which is the bottling. Now comes the part where things get pressurized. And I mean really pressurized. Most welding gases are stored as compressed gas at pressures up to 2,600 PSI, pounds per square inch. That's about 175 times more than the air pressure in your car tire. You can't just pour a gas into a bottle. It has to be compressed using high-powered pumps and compressors. These compressors push the gas into heavy-duty cylinders made from thick steel or aluminum alloy. The cylinders are tested to ensure they can withstand intense pressure without rupturing. But not all gases are stored the same way. Acetylene, for instance, is unstable under pressure. If you tried to compress it like argon, it could explode. So instead, Acetylene cylinders are filled with a porous material like limestone or charcoal and then soaked in acetone. The gas dissolves safely in the acetone and is stored at a lower pressure, usually around 250 PSI. It's kind of like having soda in a bottle. The gas is dissolved in liquid, and when you open the valve, it fizzes out safely. Once the gas is inside the cylinder, the valve is closed tightly and sealed. These valves are more than just caps. They regulate the gas flow and serve as the first line of defense in case of an emergency. Every cylinder is also labeled with exact information. What gas is inside, the purity level, how much pressure it's under, and when it was last tested. These labels aren't optional. They're mandated by safety regulations and make it easy for users to know what they're dealing with. Color coding is often used too, though this can vary by country. For example, oxygen cylinders are usually green in the US, but they might be white in Europe. Always check the label, not just the color.
Now that the gas is bottled, where do we put these welding gas bottles? Gas cylinders must be stored upright and secured with chains or straps so they don't fall over. They need to be kept away from heat sources, direct sunlight, or anything flammable. Oxygen cylinders should be stored separately from fuel gases like acetylene to prevent fires, and ventilation is key. If there's a leak, especially in an enclosed space, the gas can displace oxygen or become explosive. In welding shops, you'll often see designated cage areas or outdoor storage for cylinders. These aren't just for looks, they're there to prevent accidents. Even the toughest gas cylinder doesn't last forever. What happens when the gas runs out? Well, when that happens, the cylinder doesn't get thrown away. It goes back to the gas supplier, who refills it and sends it out again. It's a closed loop system, which is both efficient and environmentally friendly. Some gas companies also use advanced tracking systems to monitor each cylinder's location, age, and refill history. Modern welding cylinders are often built with pressure relief devices. These little components are designed to vent gas slowly if the pressure gets too high, kind of like a safety valve on a steam cooker. And thanks to advancements in metallurgy and design, cylinders today are lighter, stronger, and more durable than ever before. Some newer composite cylinders even use carbon fiber for portability. So why should you care how welding gas is bottled and stored? Because every clean weld, every precise arc, and every metal joint held together with blazing heat relies on the invisible silent force inside those bottles. The entire welding process depends on the quality, consistency, and safety of these gases. Behind every welder's torch is a whole supply chain of chemistry, engineering, and logistics working together to make the magic happen. So next time you see a welder in action, take a moment to appreciate the cylinders standing quietly nearby. They're more than just metal tanks. They're pressurized partners in precision. Every spark and every strong bond forged owes a silent debt to the gases contained within. These cylinders represent a critical, often overlooked element in the intricate dance of creation and repair that welders perform daily. They are the unsung heroes providing the very breath of the flame. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.